Hello and welcome to this uh, demonstration in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, in one of the previous videos, we have seen how uh, attackers use the return to libc uh, attack to overcome the fact that uh, the stack was made non-executable uh, with a return to libc attack even though uh, we have a stack which is non-executable still an attacker would be able to overflow a buffer and uh, do something malicious. In the demonstration that we actually see today, uh, we will be creating a shell using the return to libc attack. These codes are present in the virtual machine that is uh, present along with this course and uh, the directory for the return to libc attack uh, is here, it is nptel underscore codes module 3. So uh, we will be looking at one specific uh, C code that is called the uh, 1.c, so let us open it. So uh, as before, uh, this is a very simple C code, uh, it has two functions, a main function and a function called vuln. So uh, the vulnerability over here is due to the string copy strcpy which copies s into a buffer, now buffer is defined as a local uh, and of size 64 bytes. Therefore uh, it is quite easy for s to actually overflow this buffer. Moreover since s uh, is invoked with argv1 it can be done from the command line and therefore a user who is using this particular program could give a arbitrarily long uh, command line argument and therefore overflow this buffer. So uh, let us see this program working first. So we will run it as follows, uh, give it a short string and we see the fact that it is actually completed. On the other hand if we give uh, the program a very large string like this which is much larger than 64 bytes, uh, then as expected buffer will overflow due to the long uh, string copy which is done and we would get a segmentation fault. Now uh, very similar to the uh, what we have seen in the uh, previous demonstration where we uh, seen a buffer overflow on the stack, in order to generate the payload we will use the uh, python script which we have used uh, in the previous demonstration. So we will just copy it from there, uh, module 2, find underscore payload uh, over here and uh, as we have seen before, this uh, particular uh, script would generate strings of any arbitrary length. For example over here since we have specified 112, so uh, this particular python script would print A's 112 A's. So by varying this 112 we would could, we could actually get different lengths for the string. Now we have already found before that if uh, we specify that A is of 72 bytes, then this is the smallest length of the string which would create a segmentation fault. So let us see this happening. So um, dot slash find payload and we put it into E1 and then uh, as we have seen we can use E1 as an argument to our program vuln. E1 and see that it has a segmentation fault. Anything less than 72 could uh, work correctly. So for example, if I use uh, reduce this by 4 bytes and make it 68, this should work properly as follows. Now what is happening here is that at 72 bytes the buffer is actually overflowing and modifying the frame pointer which is stored onto the stack. This is the smallest length of the string which would modify the frame pointer. Now if we add 4 more bytes of A's to this uh, particular string, it would be not just the frame pointer but also uh, the return address which gets modified on the stack. So for example, if I increase this A from 72 
where 72 actually just modifies the frame pointer present on the stack and I make it 76, then it is the frame pointer that gets modified as well as the return address. So in order to create this payload for the return to libc attack, as we've seen in uh, the previous lecture, what we would require is to fill uh, the buffer so that the return address is modified and the return address is modified with a pointer to the system function uh, which is present in the libc. Also what is required is a string argument uh, to this system function. So we would require a string such as slash bin slash sh or slash bin slash bash uh, which is a string comprising of an executable. So what is expected to happen is that when system executes it would pick the string from the memory and execute that corresponding executable. Okay, so let us try to build this return to libc attack. So there are uh, two things that we would require. We would require the address of where system resides in the entire process and we would also need to find somewhere in the process where the string slash bin slash sh is present. So let us do this and we will do this by using the gdb debugger. We do uh, run gdb. Uh, dot slash one and uh, put a breakpoint at main and run this file with some some argument. Uh, we obtain the breakpoint, but what we are really interested in is to find the address of this libc function called system, and that we can obtain as follows. We can do a p uh, system that print system, and we see that this address over here 0x f7 e42940 is the location of the system function in the entire process. So uh, let us create a copy of this. Um, so let us Okay. The next thing we need is uh, the address of the string slash bin slash sh. Uh, we could also use uh, uh, the string slash bin slash bash which is a pointer uh, which is a string comprising of the bash executable but uh, making it work that way would be a little more difficult. On the other hand we actually use uh, and create a sh shell that is the slash bin slash sh and we need to find somewhere in the entire process where slash bin slash sh is present. So what we do is uh, we try to search in the various uh, parts of this process memory. So one thing uh, what we know for sure is that slash bin slash sh is present uh, in the libc. So if we know uh, the memory range where uh, libc is present. Uh, in the entire process space, we could search that memory area and identify the address of slash bin slash sh. Okay, so, so the first thing we need to do is find where libc is present. So we do this using the command uh, info uh, proc map and we see that libc is present starting at location f7 e0 8000 uh, to F7, FB5000 and in a similar way there are other uh, areas, uh, other 4KB pages comprising of libc. So we will try to search in this entire memory range for the required string. GDB supports such searching across memory by using the find command. The command starts like this, so it is find uh, 0x um, F. 7 e0 8000. So this is the starting address for libc that is obtained from here uh, and we will search up to the end address 
this one, uh, F7, FP9000. Yeah, as you can see, there was a small syntax error. Essentially, find requires the start address, uh, the end address, and the string to be searched, all separated by commas. So, what find would do is search in this memory range for this required string. And what we see here is that it has found one pattern lo uh, located at this address F7, F6, 102B. Let us verify that uh, this memory location actually has uh, the required string. So, we can do that by dumping the string in um, using this command x slash s 0 x f 7 f 6 1 0 2 b. And we see uh, that the string present is slash pin slash bash uh, slash sh. So we will uh, record this string. address of slash pin uh, slash sh is here ok. So, um, uh, so this is all that we need for a very basic return to libc attack. So, we will get uh, we will exit gdb and the next thing we would do is to create the payload. So, in order to create the payload uh, we have written a small python script known as uh, payload generator. So, we will open that. And uh, uh, what we see here is that this particular payload generator uh, prints a string y which comprises of 76 a's. So, the 76 a's are used to overflow the buffer. And as we uh, and and you can recollect that uh, if we overflow by 76 A's, uh, the next four strings would be uh, over would be overriding the return address. So in little Indian format, we put the address of the system function that is F7 E4 2940. As you can see here, this matches the uh, address of system function which we have just found. Next we leave a gap of 4 bytes in uh, the stack. So, we just fill it with some arbitrary values. In this case, we put A, but we could actually fill it with anything. And then we put the address of the string slash pin slash sh. So, uh, this address is f7, f6, 102b, uh, which matches the uh, address that we have actually found for slash pin slash sh. So, what is going to happen now is that when the function actually returns, uh, it is going to return to this particular address which we have specified over here and which would be present in the return address location in the stack and this would trigger the system uh, function in libc to execute. The system function would then pick from the stack the only argument uh, that it requires and this argument is a character pointer and uh, uh, it is it's expecting a pointer to a string comprising of an executable. So, it uses this address as the argument and picks the string slash pin slash sh and executes it. So, the first thing we need to do is uh, run the payload generator and create our required payload. So, we do this as uh, follows. So, we run python payload generator dot py and store the result in uh, this file called e2 and then we run one again and give the input using cat e2 and give the input from the file e2. So, what we see now is due to this maliciously formed string, uh, it would trigger the system to execute and create the shell. As before, as we seen uh, with the regular buffer, this shell uh, is what is present over here with the PID 4416 and also what you see is that there are other processes present uh, in the background. Uh, first is the bash which is the original process comprising of this particular uh, terminal. Then you have the one uh, executable which uh, has a process ID 4415 
and uh, it is still running in the background. We have SH and of course this particular uh, process PS which we have just used. So what the system uh, function does is that it forks a process and then executes that particular process. So essentially the child of this one process is the shell that we have just created. Now uh, the one process is blocked until uh, the SH process completes its execution. So when we terminate uh, this SH process, what we see is that the one process will continue to execute. So let us see this happening. So we exit the SH, but what we will see is that the one process will have a segmentation fault. Okay. So this is because the one process is looking into the stack and it picks out some garbage or some arbitrary values from the stack and tries to execute that and uh, uh, it is causing this pro the process to actually crash. And as we have seen in the theory, uh, a better way of doing it is to safely exit that particular program. As an assignment, you could try to modify this uh, vulnerability that we have created, uh, this vulnerability that we have exploited and uh, try to safely exit uh, from the shell. So in order to do that, we have also created uh, this uh, Python script payload generator with exit, uh, which with uh, exit, which creates the string not only comprising of the uh, system function that we have here and uh, its corresponding argument, but also the exit function. So this address you would require to fill with the address of the exit function, uh, which would be present somewhere in the libc memory region of the process. Thank you.